Um, I, I am working on several things as uh, has been pointed out and uh, two of the cases um, in South Asia that I'm looking at are on statelessness and I'll be talking about that today. So um, just wanted to, uh, you know, put, um, uh, you know, make everybody, um, you know, on the same page that um, I'm working on two areas around uh, this country, Bangladesh. So one area is um, Rakhine, uh, the Rakhine state of Myanmar. Uh, and the other is um, Northeast in Northeastern India, Assam over here. So uh, both these places have a history of uh, migration during uh, British colonial rule uh, of the, uh, which happened in the region and, um, you know, until the late 40s. And now uh, with uh, rising majoritarianism, this whole problem of illegal migration over the past few decades have been coming up. And uh, there have been also questions of demographic change and that has helped a lot of politicians to win votes. So I'll be talking about that today. So uh, we all know about the Rohingyas. Three years ago, there was um, uh, this um, very, very horrific incident that I'll be talking about in the next slide. But what I wanted to say is that, as I said, they are from the uh, Western border uh, province in uh, Myanmar, and they are a Muslim ethnic group. Uh, according to the Burmese, they're called uh, Bengalis. Uh, the word Rohingya is not allowed, according to uh, Burmese officials. Uh, what's interesting is that um, in Rakhine, uh, about, uh, you know, they have a population of about 4.1 million. And until the summer of 2017, it was 1.1 uh, million were Muslims. And the Rohingyas, uh, who are the Muslims of the province, uh, they claim to be descendant of Arab Persian migrants who went there as traders, but uh, a lot of them are also migrants from East Bengal, uh, you know, it, which happened during British colonial rule. So what matters now is that there have uh, there is this history of persecution of the Rohingyas, which started off pretty much in 1978, when there was the first uh, military uh, crackdown by the Burmese, and this was horrific. It included murder and rape. Uh, and in 1982, they were stripped of citizenship. Um, and uh, in 2017, something called a textbook example of ethnic cleansing happened according to the UN, where seven to eight million thousand Rohingyas fled to Bangladesh. Um, and uh, this has been happening for quite some time. Even before this, about three 100,000 uh, were in Bangladesh, they fled, uh, you know, a decade or two earlier. So the other case that I'll be talking about is, um, is Assam, which is this place in northeastern India, it has a population of 31 million. Uh, the major uh, language here is Assamese, uh, spoken by about half the population, followed by Bengali. Uh, the major religion is Hinduism, followed by Islam, which is uh, followed by 34% of the population. Um, the interesting thing is, um, there is this whole rhetoric around undocumented migration uh, to India happening from Bangladesh. And uh, with three uh, sides of the country uh, of Bangladesh bordered by India, um, this is, you know, something that's drummed up by politicians all the time. It's what's interesting is that the border with Assam is only about 262 kilometers. Uh, which is uh, nothing close to the overall border uh, that Bangladesh has with India, which is over 4,000 kilometers. Uh, in 1971, when uh, Bangladesh had its independence war from uh, Pakistan, there was indeed migration with the crackdown by the Pakistan um, armed forces. Uh, so what happened back then is there was a census in the 70s in Assam, and it shows an increase in uh, it showed an increase in Bengali speakers and Muslims. Uh, this did not go well with the locals and there was a lot of conflict and there was a horrific massacre in 1983 uh, where 3000 Bengali Muslims were killed uh, in a place called Nelly. After that, the Indian uh, central government uh, held talks with the Assamese nationalists and agreed on creating a citizenship register, uh, something to what happened with the Rohingyas back in Myanmar. So, uh, and then, uh, you know, according to this register, uh, the definition of a foreigner was that anyone who entered India after uh, midnight of March 24th, 1971. On March 25th, Bangladesh declared its independence, so this date was chosen. 
So a very simple reason why Bengali Muslims became targets is because of the rise of demography. Um, in 1921, when this area was still under British rule, it was just 9% of the population. Muslims were only 9%. By 2011, it was 34%. Uh, also, there was the rise of the Hindu right, um, and uh, with the advent of BJP, which is the government at the center, um, they won elections, the state elections in 2016, and they did it in two ways. They took up um, uh, indigenous icons and symbols, for example, the ancient saint uh, Shankara Deva, uh, who always talked about pluralism was taken up and he was um, showed as a Hindu saint. Uh, also a modern icon uh, singer, Dr. Bhupen Hazarika. Uh, he was also uh, appropriated by the Hindu right, um, his legacy. And uh, this whole story uh, about infiltration by Bangladeshis from the, local, uh, from the Southern border was also played up during that election. Then something happened called the National Register of Citizens. Uh, and um, this was a demand of the 1985 accord that the Assamese nationalists had with the Indian central government. But this did not really pass through until the summer of 2019 when it was released. And it was found that 1.9 million people did not make the final cut. The excluded people were mainly Bengali speakers, uh, both Hindus and Muslims. This gets more complicated because uh, a lot of Hindus also came up in this list and uh, which um, affected uh, the BJP's vote bank, which is the um, uh, central, the government at the India center and also the state government in Assam. So in December, 2019, what was passed in the Indian um, parliament was the Citizenship Amendment Act, which said that any minority group uh, meaning any non-Muslim coming in from neighboring Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, which are the main Muslim majority countries in the region, would be eligible for Indian citizenship. And um, this makes it um, very complicated around this time. If you remember the news, there was a lot of problems in India. There were a lot of protests. So this is one, uh, one um, poster from that time. So, and... Um, at this point, we are probably looking at a uh, possible case of statelessness, because uh, although the Bengali Hindus um, are protected by the CAA, uh, the Citizenship Amendment Act, the Bengali Muslims are singled out. And the problem is uh, India and Bangladesh do not have a treaty of deportation. So without this absence of treaty, where would they be deported? And if what if Bangladesh does not take them? Are we looking at a similar case of the Rohingyas? So I would like to uh, complete with this uh, quote uh, from Time Magazine by one person whose name did not feature in the National Register of Citizenship. So what uh, this person was saying is that, what will they do to us at the end and drown us in the sea, uh, send us to a country I have not even seen in my imagination, leave us at the border with nothing. Um, and this case is not, uh, you know, uh, the uh, case of the Bengali Muslims in Assam is, um, it came up in 2019 when, uh, you know, 2 million people were almost left out, but it's not getting a lot of attention. And uh, if this is another case of statelessness, we might be looking at a big uh, number of people uh, being turned stateless, and this would be a problem for the whole South Asian region. So um, I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, and this is part of the work that I'm doing at, uh, at York here in the UK. So thanks.